So let's recap. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my $75 Glary guitar and trying to turn it into a Super Strat. And uh, I did part one where I reshaped the headstock, sanded the neck down, and added stainless steel frets. You can check out that video by clicking the link in the description. Now let's get to the body and the changes with the electronics. So I'm starting this project with this Glary guitar. And one of the things I love is this color. This color reminds me of the Strat Pluses from the late 80s and the early 90s. So I'm gonna leave this color on here. I really like it. It doesn't show up in the camera, but it's really kind of that aqua green blue, not just blue. Now, another thing, if you have a glare guitar, something to note is it's humbucker, single humbucker is what the routing is. So that's pretty cool for upgrading to the humbuckers. Now I'm gonna remove the pick guard. All I'm gonna do is clip the ground to the bridge, the ground to the output jack and the hot to the output jack. And one of the reasons that's great about doing it this way is now I have a fully intact pick guard all ready to go. You never know when you're gonna need a pick guard all wired up, ready to drop into a guitar, or maybe somebody, a friend or a family member might need something like this. Now let's remove the bridge. I'm gonna do this by loosening the screws to the claw so I can remove the springs. And when I was doing this, I noticed something interesting. The people at Glary soldered the ground wire to the screw, not the tab on the claw. And you know, everyone has a first day at the job. So now let's go ahead and remove the screws for the bridge and see what kind of upgrades can we do to this guitar. Not only do you have to worry about humbuckers fitting in the routed spots for pickups, you have to worry about different bridges fitting in there. Another thing that came up when I was taking this guitar apart was the strap buttons. When I was undoing the strap buttons, I noticed two things. One, the screw that's holding in the button is way too small. Not only is it too short, it's too narrow. With the basswood being so soft, it was barely in there at all. So if you have a Glary, I would definitely think about upgrading your strap buttons to either strap locks or better buttons. Now I have most of the parts off the guitar. I'm going to look at the neck joint. One of the things I want to do is get rid of this back plate. Uh, I showed it to you guys before in the first video with the neck. I don't want that anymore. What I want to do is improve the way the, the neck and the, the body feel. And how I'm going to do that is replace that plate with some furls. I'm going to take four furls and put it in there. And that way, my hand is going to come across right against that body. And it doesn't really remove a lot, but it's going to take about two millimeters, maybe three millimeters thickness off that neck joint. That makes a big difference. You can add the furls just by using a 5 8 bit. I'm using the one from Stumac for one particular reason. I like how sharp it is and how it cuts through the paint. I don't have to worry about that. When I used to use just a regular 5 8 bit, I just put a little painter's tape over the body before I drilled into it. It's up to you. And of course, you just repeat the process uh, until you have all four. Now, something else to note, this bit is just a slightly larger than the furls that you can buy, which I like. They drop right in, but you can get a tighter one if you'd like, but this is the one I prefer. When I do easy mods like this, I tend to buy a bunch of testers, paint pens. Testers is a brand of paints that you can find in hobby stores. I love these paints. You can use them to fix chips, all kinds of stuff. I keep a black one in my shop at all times. And basically I'll just paint in any of the stuff that I, that I drilled into and it looks fantastic. So now let's talk about the bridge. Now, of course, the original bridge was a Strat style bridge and I actually have those bridges in a lot of my guitars and I like them, but I have this really, really cool titanium bridge. That's right, this is a bridge where the block, the saddles, the entire thing is titanium. And it is a fantastic bridge by Rock Rabbit. So I wanted to stick it in this guitar because I thought it was a cool upgrade. It definitely will be fit what I'm gonna do, you'll see later. But there's a couple issues. First, the, the holes don't line up for the screws. So what I gotta do is plug two of the holes. I'm gonna do that by using a 11 16th dowel and using a drill bit that's 11 16th, drill out two holes and then plug them with the dowel. To do that, all I gotta do is set the depth with some painter's tape on the drill bit, drill the two holes, use some type on wood glue on the dowels and then insert them and let them dry. Now I like to work on other projects while glue's drying. So I'm going to shield the cavity with some conductive shielding paint. Now, of course you can use copper foil, whatever you like. I like this cause it's fast. It's really, really fast. I can shield out this entire cavity in about three to four minutes, which is really, really fast. Now you can make this stuff. Obviously it's pretty easy. There's videos on YouTube showing you how to do it. But like I said, when you average this out, a small can like this is really inexpensive unless you're only doing one guitar. 
Now, after waiting for the glue to dry, it's time to install the bridge and we're gonna drill two new holes for those screws, keeping in mind that the first two screws were fine. They didn't need anything adjusted. This bridge only uses four screws, not all six. And I have to give props to the Rock Rabbit guys. Not only is the bridge titanium, the saddle's titanium, but the claw is titanium. This literally feels like air. I just wanted to keep in mind that this is a basswood body. With this bridge and body right now, they weigh just about two pounds. Now that the bridge is installed, it's time to discuss the problems. Uh, this is gonna happen. The block on the Rock Rabbit is so thick that it won't move in the, in the uh, routed hole. So, we have to remove some material. Now, what's interesting is Glary almost did it right. They routed out most of the material. So there wasn't a whole lot. It's not like I have to take and router everything out from scratch. So I'm just gonna use a, a router bit and my Dremel and just Dremel out the material and then make the hole a little bigger. Once I started this, I realized it was a little bit more material than I thought it was gonna be. I could have just got out my router and done this. But to be honest with you, I'm still happy I used the Dremel. It was fast, it was easy, and I knocked it out in about 10 minutes. Another thing you should be prepared to handle is if you're installing a new pick guard, you're going to probably have to drill new holes. The odds of a aftermarket pick guard lining up with what Glary is using is not very likely, although possible. In this case, it was not. So what you have to do is fill all of the pick guard holes on the original pick guard. So what I did is just use toothpicks, a little type on wood glue, and I filled them all in. It's really simple. You just put them in, put some glue in, cut them off, wait for them to dry, use the new pick guard as a template and drill the new holes. Now it's time to move on to the electronics and we're gonna start with the pickups. For the pickups, I wound two pickups. This is a black stock pickup, which is what I call my brand of pickups when I make them for these videos. And this is an Alnico 5 pickup that's wound just a little hot. It's kind of like a JB, it's got a little kick to it. It's a two conductor pickup, so it's just basically set up to be just a humbucker. Now for the neck pickup, I also made an Alnico 5 because that's my favorite magnets for humbuckers, but I also wound this one just a little softer, so it's more like a PAF. And in this case, I made it a four conductor so I can coil split the neck pickup. For the rest of electronics, I'm gonna keep it easy. I'm gonna use a Bourne's 250K potentiometer for the tone pot. This is something I like. I like the 250K in the tone and 500K in in the uh, volume. This is also something Eddie Van Halen uses. Um, and I'm also using a Bourne's potentiometer for the volume pot. Now in between the volume tone, I'm using a mini toggle switch. It's a DPDT on on switch. It allows me to coil split the neck pickup when I want. Now it's time to wire everything up. Before I do, I wanna show you my favorite tool. It's a light with a magnifying glass. It has both white light and yellow light. The brightness is variable. It is a fantastic thing that clips on your desk. It's about $100, but it's well worth it if you're looking for something like this. Now, when it comes to wiring up the guitar, there's only a couple things worth noting. First, I'm using a three-way switch that I repurposed from another guitar. It was just laying around my parts bent. The other thing that's worth noting is that only the uh, neck pickup is gonna be hooked up to the switch, which is gonna be the coil split. Uh, other than that, I used a basic Telecaster wiring diagram for this. In fact, it works the exact same way. Both pickups are wired to the three-way switch, then the switch to the uh, volume, which then goes to the output jack. And of course, the tone knob is then wired to the input lug of the uh, volume pot. I used a very basic boring fender capacitor for the tone control. So no special wiring in this guitar. I use all cloth braided wiring because I like it. It's easy to work with. I did, however, install a new Switchcraft output jack. Like I said, I'm keeping the electronics basic. That's because there's going to be a lot of time put into other things, including the nut. For the nut, I'm using brass. I bought a brass blank from all parts. That's usually where I buy these. And I'm going to shape it into a nut for this guitar. Now to do that, there's a couple things I want you to know. First, just like the stainless steel frets I used, you don't need special tools for these materials. They're just harder materials, so therefore they take more work and they can put more stress on those tools. In other words, sandpaper files wear out faster. So you can see right here, I'm just sanding with 150 grit sandpaper just to file down the brass quickly, and then I'm gonna start shaping it. Now shaping it, I'm gonna do two things. First, I'm gonna use a pencil and just kind of draw out how I think the nut should look. Then I'm gonna start filing and shaping it to the general shape that the nut is going to end up being. This is pretty basic and 
to be honest with you, for a $10 piece of material, I would get two of them and then just practice on one. Now, once I got the general shape going, what I'm gonna do is take a nut that I already know fits the guitar and just put it in the vise next to my brass nut and just start slotting it. In most cases, what you're gonna be doing is replacing a nut with a better material. In other words, in this case, this had a plastic nut. I'm gonna put a brass one in. If that's the case, then use the original one as the template. It makes things real easy. Now this will apply as long as the original nut is not defective in some way. Now in this case, the slots are probably not gonna be correct, but I'm not setting the depth of the slots using the original nut, just the spacing and of course the shape of the nut. Now it's time to level the frets. Now to do this, you want to get a notch straight edge, put it on the fretboard and adjust the truss rod so the neck is perfectly flat. This can be done whether it's on the body or like here, just the neck by itself. Either way, the neck has to be flat. If you don't have a notched straight edge, you can make one out of a piece of foam board, cardboard, pretty much anything. But if you're gonna do any kind of repair for any amount of time, definitely invest in one of these. Now it's time to level the frets. Now, a couple things you wanna note, you can do this with the neck on or off the guitar, it's up to you. When leveling frets, there's two tools I use. There's the sanding beam, which has sandpaper, and then a six inch fret file. If the issue was I had a couple high frets and I just wanted to go over the frets and level them, I would use the six inch and just go over all the frets, marking a couple high ones with a Sharpie and then going over them with that file. But since these are newly installed frets, I'm gonna level all of them. So I'm gonna use the beam and some 220 sandpaper. Now, once I've done with 220, I'm gonna go to 320 and that should do it. The other thing I do is I take a black Sharpie and I mark every fret. That way when I'm leveling them, I can see which parts of the frets are not being hit. Now, since I'm doing stainless steel frets, something I do only with stainless steel frets is instead of doing 220 and then going to 320 or 350, I go to 220 and then to 400. Uh, no particular reason other than the stainless steel frets really polish really fast. So I just want to kind of go to the highest grit I can possibly go with them. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to use the fret rocker and check all the frets. And if I find a spot, I will mark them with a Sharpie. So it's a great way to find all the high points. Just go ahead and mark them and then continue to go until there's no high points. Now it's time to crown the frets. Now, the files I love are called the round nose diamond files. They are amazing, but they are $150 a piece. This file, the one I'm using in this video, is the one I think you should use. I bought it about 15 years ago. It's $50 and you can get three different attachments for it. So you'll have three different types of fret wire to adjust to. It's great. It's definitely a file that if you buy this, uh, unless you just wanna go crazy and get the upgraded one, this will take you forever to wear out. Once you're done leveling and now crowning the frets over, it's time to polish them. And this, you're definitely gonna to wanna to take some painter's tape or some masking tape and tape off the fretboard. This is gonna get a lot of dust. Although there's a little dust on the fretboard from when I did the fret work, that will come off. This stuff is gonna be like a fine powder and it's gonna get into stuff. So definitely take the time to tape this stuff off. Now, once you're ready, I use a micro mesh set. You can buy them from Stumac or Amazon. I get mine on Amazon because they're a little cheaper. It starts at 1500 and it goes all the way up to 12,000 and there's like seven layers in between. It's a beautiful way to polish the frets. I recommend this highly, I do use it. However, I thought I'd show you in this video what I really use all the time, but I don't recommend it to anyone just starting out. I use fret polishing wheels that you attach to a Dremel. Now, there's a couple things. First, you gotta carve like a notch into it, which takes a little bit of work. Also, you have to practice a lot. As you can see when I'm doing this, um, if you mess up, you're just gonna score the fretboard and pretty much ruin it. So. It's a really tricky tool, but man, I have not found anything that polishes frets any shinier. Once I'm done with all that, I'm gonna use my fret end dress file and just polish up the ends a little bit and use a little bit of the micro mesh to polish those uh, as well. And, uh, and that's actually something I already did. I'm just actually showing you how you have to do it twice because some of the problems when you're working on frets, when you're leveling them, when you're using the Dremel, if you heat up the frets in any way, sometimes they kind of pop again from, from the end. So again, you've gotta be prepared to kind of do your work just a little bit, not so much twice, but go over your work and smooth it out. So in the last episode, which is part three, we'll be doing a couple things. I'll be installing the tuning keys. I'll, uh, I'll be setting the guitar up and then of course doing the sound demo. Obviously, if you wanna see that video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you guys get notified when that video comes out. And uh, as always, I wanna thank you guys so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear.